What is up you sexy beasts? I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Vakey. I'm a 34 year old dad, husband. I'm a videographer and a photographer in the kind of fitness CrossFit space. And so my content is all around the CrossFit world, but also around uh, content creation, you know, camera gear, editing, all that fun stuff. So if that's something you're into, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and follow along. That would mean a lot. Today, I wanna to talk about the 2020 CrossFit Games. We now know that it's gonna be a two-part competition, starting with uh, an online section. It's gonna be like two to three days, which the 30 top males, 30 top uh, males will take part in. And then from that, they're gonna invite the top five to actually compete in person in California. Now, the first thing I wanna bring up is the Rogue Invitational. Obviously, that ran so well. Everyone enjoyed that, from the athletes to the spectators. It was a really, really successful event. The only difference between the CrossFit Games and the Rogue Invitational is that for the CrossFit Games, they are actually trying to crown the fittest on earth. Whereas the Rogue is an independent kind of competition, you know, they had some great prize money, but they didn't claim to crown the fittest on earth. So that's kind of for me the major difference between the two. And I bring that up because with the Rogue Invitational, uh, all the athletes were competing at the same time, which meant that some athletes uh, had to kind of get up in the middle of the night and compete. Now, if you are trying to find the fittest person in the world, you want to make sure that there's a fair competition and that athletes are kind of competing at a time that's going to be similar or, uh, you know, it's not going to be inconvenient or disadvantage some athletes. So although from a spectator point of view, it makes a lot of sense to get everyone to go at the same time. So the live feed, you can just watch everything happening at the same time. And that's really nice for a spectator, but obviously not so nice for an athlete having to train or you know compete at like two in the morning. And from what I understand so far, the CrossFit Games won't be doing this where they'll ask athletes to get up in the middle of the night and compete with everyone else. I think that there might be a different approach, maybe three different uh, groups of athletes around the world in similar time zones competing together. I do wonder whether they could provide us, the fans, with some kind of uh, video where we can see all the athletes competing at the same time. So even if they record the performances and then sync them up to actually play them back where they're all competing at the same time. So you've got the live feeds and those who want to get up and watch all the individuals do their workouts um, via the live feed or whether they then, after the fact, bring all those live feeds together, sync them up, and then provide us with a, you know, a video piece that actually shows everyone doing that one workout at the same time. So even though they won't be live, that'll be uh, a lot nicer to watch as a spectator, rather than having to tune in to 60 different live feeds at different times to see athletes compete, it would be really nice to somehow bring it all together and be able to watch them all at once. Or perhaps if they are gonna go down the route of having three different groups, three different time zones, Perhaps we'll have three videos come out after all the performances. You know, group one, group two, group three. You've got three uh, videos to watch for to see all the females competing. You've got three videos to watch to watch all the males competing. And there'll be like 10 athletes per video, if that makes sense. So that's just something that I think about as a videographer. It wouldn't be too hard if you have like 10 individual videos to then sync those up to create one video showing all 10 athletes. Doing a multi-cam edit where you can kind of click in and out of different athletes' screens and see how they're going. And then also having a screen where you can see all 10 people people that's definitely something that's doable whether they'll go down that route i don't know but i do feel that if you're looking for the fittest on earth if that is the goal of your competition that's the claim you're making uh, you can't be disadvantaging athletes by asking them to get up in some ridiculous hour of the night to uh, to work out and to compete so i think that's the main thing you have to consider when you're comparing the crossfit games with the rogue invitational rogue invitational was just for money the CrossFit Games is for money, but also for the crown. But I am pumped that they're going ahead with some kind of competition. It's gonna be great for us to watch something happen. And I think it's cool for the rookies that just made it for the first time to actually have something to compete in and to say that they actually took part in the 2020 Games. I think of my two fellow Aussies, Jay Crouch and Harriet Roberts, qualifying for the first time, it would have been heartbreaking for them to not be able to actually take part, You know, even though I know they will probably both make it back in future years, it's gonna be cool to see them actually take part even though it's only gonna be online. Now, let's talk about the actual in-person competition. Only five people. That is gonna be a completely different ball game to any previous games. In fact, I think it has the potential to be the most intense, the most grueling CrossFit games in the history of our sport. There's something about a crowd. There's something about having more people around, um, more competitors, you know, your support crew. It just makes the experience a little bit easier, it's still painful, but having only four other competitors, zero spectators, zero support crew, it's gonna be hard, very, very hard mentally. And so I think those top five are gonna be in for a treat. 
my predictions on the male side, I don't think anyone's going to challenge Matt Fraser. I still think that he is head and shoulders above everyone else when it comes to physical ability, but also mental ability. But I do think there's one girl that can challenge Tia Claire to me. One girl that has the mental capacity, the grunt, the just the ability to hurt, and that is Miss Cara Saunders. I'm so excited. I really, really, really hope and wish and pray um, that both Cara and Tia make it into the top five because I would love to see those guys go head to head again. I think they bring the best out of each other, and so I'd love to see both those ladies at the CrossFit Games in California. Look, we have some incredible female athletes in our sport, but I just don't think anyone else other than Kara has the mental uh, capacity, the mental strength that Tia has, but I do believe that Kara could give her a run. And so, I don't know, I'm just super excited. I love both those girls, and I just feel like in the past when they've gone head to head, um, it's just been such a great show. So I'm looking forward to maybe, just maybe in 2020, we can see the two Aussies uh, back in an in-person competition together. And that's about all I want to say about the games today. If you're comparing Rogue to the games, you have to understand that for the games, they're trying to claim the fittest on earth. And so there has to be some considerations made. Uh, obviously with a sanctional event or a independent event, they can just say, look, it's our way or the highway. And if you have to get up at two in the morning to, to do the workout, so be it. I don't think you can do that with the games. Um, I understand that for a spectator, it'll be a lot easier to see everyone do it at the same time. But I just wonder whether the CrossFit Games can still achieve that somehow. Um, I'm excited for the rookies. I'm excited for the possibility of seeing Tia and Kara go head to head. I feel like things are ramping up again for our sport. A new CEO, a new CEO who actually posted about the CrossFit Games dates and changes um, before anyone else, I believe, before even the, the games page. So it's cool to have him there excited about um, the sport. And then I just hope that after the CrossFit Games, we can just get back to traveling and doing other events. And then, of course, you open early next year, I imagine. It's exciting times and uh, it's cool to be part of it. It's a good time to be a CrossFitter. If you want to see some more content on this topic, there's some awesome videos out there. The Morning Chalk Hub did a great discussion with Justin, Tommy, and Nikki. They covered some great, unique points uh, on the changes. And then also Arm & Hammer. So go and check out their channels. They both have some great videos on this. Other than that, guys, stay sexy, keep roaring love, and I'll see you soon. Bye.